At this point, we're going to start talking about how to scale a Vue.js application into a full scale application. Now, there are several pain points we would run into if we started taking those manual components that we were just creating inside of a main.js file. It'd be very frustrating. So obviously we want to go towards a Webpack build system. And we also want to start defining our view components in a single file component structure. I'll show you what that is. And to help us get started, let's go ahead and install the view CLI, which we can do by installing NPM globally view CLI. I've already done that. So I will not run that install. So now we have the view command. And if you do view list, you'll see that there's a set of templates that we can pick. Um, and Webpack is going to be the one that we want to start off with. So we're going to want to go view init Webpack. And then you could also give it a folder if you wanted it to create it into a different folder. But we're going to say do it in the folder we're in now. And we're just going to say yes to almost all of these defaults. Runtime plus compiler. Yes, we do want that. And let's say no to all the add-ons. So no view router. We will get to that in the next video. And uh, no to all the other additions. So now we can just run npm install and npm run dev. I'll also open this in code. So this will get us all going here. So when this is done installing, it's going to open up my project in Visual Studio Code and then start npm run dev and we will be rolling. All right, so about a minute later, and here's our application that we've created. And we're just going to go ahead and you can see the index file is pretty much what we've been working with. We just have an ID of app and our entire application renders into there. And then the rest is going to happen in the source. If you want to look more at what's going on in the build, you can see there's quite a few build files uh, that you can kind of sort through. Uh, but the, the short of it is, is we're running Webpack now and we are having Webpack compile down what are called view files, dot view files. Now you'll want to on your editor also install an extension that allows you to work with dot view files on Visual Studio Code that's called VTUR. V-E-T-U-R. Um, I don't know why it's not called something more straightforward, but V-E-T-U-R is the extension you want for Visual Studio Code. Um, and this is basically the anatomy of a single file component. You break out your template, your script, and your style into three separate tag-based structures. Um, syntax highlighting works great this way for both your HTML and your JavaScript, well, also for your CSS. So that's a lot cleaner. And also things are broken out. Um, you can see here that we can import a Hello World component, register that component, and then we can spit it out in our template. And you can arrange these however you want if you like your template down lower, which is actually what I prefer, um, or however you like it, you can arrange it. So let's go ahead and look at this Hello World component. Let's work with these uh, single file components a little bit more here. Let's click in as Hello World component. You can see we're inserting all these links that we have here. Let's just erase some stuff and clean this up. So here's our Hello World component. All we have to do is export default um, an object, and that's our component configuration. One important thing to note here in view is whenever you're using a child component, the data cannot return just an object. Uh, like you can do on the top level component. On the top level component, you say data, you give it an object, and that's all your values. Child components cannot do that. Um, there are some problems with pointers uh, that you'll run into. So if you don't really understand what those problems would be, just know as a practice, any child component, anything that is not your very top level component, when you define data, run a function that returns an object of your data. That's very, very important. So that's the pattern we're going to be using going forward. Uh, so let's say we want to create two more components to add to this page. I'm going to go ahead and save here, cleaned it out a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and add two component files. Let's say new file. We'll just call it module1.view. And let's do a template. And let's do a script tag. And let's also do a style. So our template is just going to spit out um, h1 module one. And then here's my script tag. You can see when I have that uh, feature set up, then it automatically did the export default for me. I'm going to leave that there. That's all I need. I'm not going to do anything smart with data for right now. So there's my module one and let's save this as module two as well. So now we have module one and module two. We'll call that module two. So now we want to on our hello world, import those components. Uh, let's go ahead and import. And now I can register those components. Components are going to be 
module one, which is the same as doing module one, since we're using uh, ES6 here. Make sure I add my comma. So now I've registered module one and I can now use module one. And I get that H1 that appears right there. I can also pull in module two, just the same. Let's pull in module two, let's import module two. And now we're scaling out our components uh, pretty quickly and easily. Now all we have to do is spit it out on the page. So I can go module two. Now module one and module two are on our page. Nothing really magical happening there. Let's take a look at how the style works now. So I can now define a style that has to do with my module. I can go H1, color red, and this is gonna break. I'm gonna show you in a minute why. Uh, so H1 is red for module one, and H1 is pink for module two. And you'll notice that module two just overwrote module one and our app level module. Uh, and that's because if you don't tell this to be scoped style, it's going to be global style. Let's go ahead and inspect this real quick. You'll see what I mean. You can see that we have H1 pink and H1 red. They're overriding each other. They're just standard styles. Uh, so we do not want that. Uh, instead, what we want to do is we want to actually do a scoped style that's just for our component. And all you do is add the scoped HTML attribute. And so we're gonna add that scoped there, scoped there, and now everything works exactly as we've expected. So let's go ahead and look what's different now. You can see that that rule is actually H1 for our object, for just our module, this module right here. Let's inspect this HTML. You can see we have this data V and then some hash uh, attribute which is being added. So only H1s on our components get this style. It's a really great rule. So you can scope style very, very easily. Um, and that's really, really nice. So don't forget about that scoped attribute. Um, and then again, the other gotcha is you always wanna make sure if you're defining data, um, that you define data as a function that returns an object. That's kind of your introduction to single file components. Uh, one more thing to add, and we can really start scaling out our application, and that is how we handle routing with View Router. We'll do that next.